Welcome to What's Brewing. I'm your host, Bybee Wegners, and today we'll be finding out what's brewing with Scott Zimmerman from Air Bears. Air Bears is so cool. Welcome, Scott. Hi. Tell us a little bit about the organization and Whoa. exactly what it is. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, started flying RC aircraft as a hobby. It's a lot of fun. and um, I happened to be going through my Facebook news feed one time, and I read a story about a... Uh, an elderly man with dementia that decided to go for a walk outside of his house and he got lost and his friends and family searched for him all day long to no avail. Um, a neighbor happened to have uh, a little copter with a camera on it and he said well let me see what I can do and he found him in 20 minutes. You know I think I remember that story. So I, I said why don't we just put together a whole army of guys that will just volunteer their time and equipment to help people like that. And so I started Air Bears. Um, and we've got a lot of enthusiastic support from the hobby community, and it's, it's been going like gangbusters. Air Bears is all about drones, yes. which are becoming so popular, and uh, a lot of people don't know what they are, um, are a little bit scared of them or nervous that their privacy is going to be invaded by a drone, um, but they're just wonderful things, and you have such great uses for them. Besides rescuing, what are some of the other things that your drones are used for? Oh, well, interesting, uh, because we started, I started Air Bears as a search and rescue outfit, but what we quickly discovered is that search and rescue is just the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm. that there's so many applications for these. Um, in fact, the firefighters, the, the firefighting community as a whole, ha are calling the drone the best firefighting tool since the hose. They absolutely love this technology and it provides them a unique perspective on their emergency situation and it helps keep their, uh, their personnel safe and, and, and lets them be more effective at their jobs. And so saving lives in, in a lot of ways other than just searching. Right. Yeah, lots of different uses and um, we're, we've got a few pictures coming up but before we take a look at those, uh, where exactly are all the people located that go out and do this? Well, it's interesting. I, uh, I hadn't intended Air Bears to be a global op operation off the bat, but it is. Uh, and, and the reason for that is pretty simple. I mean, it's the World Wide Web and uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you live or what language you speak, the love of flight is universal and so is the love of life. So um, it, it's, it makes a lot of sense that people all over the world want to join this and help their local communities uh, be safe and, and just use what they fly for fun to do it. So Air Bears is based locally, but you have volunteers from everywhere. All over the world. And what qualifies someone to become a, a member? Well, uh, all you have to do is be at least 16 years old and own something that flies and carries a camera. And you don't even have to know exactly how to use it. You train people. Well, no. The, the, typically, the person who volunteers already has some flying skills under their belt. Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's kind of important. Um, they, they realize that they might get called out on a, uh, you know, on a tense situation. So they, they're good pilots, and they know what they're doing already, or they wouldn't have signed up to begin with. I see. Okay, so an organization such as a fire department, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, wants to have a drone and wants someone to be able to operate it, but they don't have somebody on their staff currently. If they want to become involved, how would they go about doing that? It's real simple. All they have to do is go to airbears.org and they just sign up. We have two ways you can be part of our organization. You can be either a volunteer or you can be what we call a commander. Mm -hmm. And that's where they would sign up. They'd sign up as a commander. And then once we get a hold of them and verify some information, we give them access to our entire member database. Uh, that way they can search for the members that are closest to their area and they can look at their individual profiles to check out you know, what their skills are, what their special certifications. They can pick the right guy for the right job depending on that situation and they go out there and they help them and we all do it for free. How are you funded? Um, <laughs> by my back pocket. <laughs> you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, I've been trying to get a, a, like a foundation grant for this for over a year. Um, but what I've discovered that is a lot, of the, the, um, a lot of these companies or foundations that supply grants to, you, you have to fit into a little category in order to qualify. Well, what we're doing is unprecedented. So we don't fit into a category. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're still waiting. So uh, 
Thankfully, we've gotten some very nice uh, donations from the Wildwood Lions Club. Thank you very much. They're great. Um, and we just recently got signed up with Amazon. So if you pick Air Bears as your favorite charity on your Amazon, you can shop and a little bit goes to us. So that should hopefully help out too. Uh, that is great. And it, it's nice that you're providing ways for people to learn a little bit more about drones too. Right, yeah. Education is huge. They're so popular now and, and uh, very um, obscure to people, right. to many people. Right, right. And that, that speaks to the whole fear about the privacy thing. You know, for something about human nature, we always fear what we don't understand. Right. Uh, so that's why we take every opportunity we can to do some community outreach and speak at public events to um, introduce this technology to people who are unfamiliar with it. Because once you find out what it is and what it can do, and more importantly, what it can't do, then that alleviates some of the fear uh, and some of the negative perceptions surrounding the technology. That's really good to know. Well, and you have so many different things to do. So let's take a, a couple, uh, look at a couple of pictures that you have here sure. that are showing some different applications for the use of your drones. This is an interesting shot because it's one of two in existence of the very first time a drone was used to save the lives of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a couple. This happened in uh, 2014 in the floods of Texas. And our member used his drone to uh, connect what we call a safety line to these people uh, who had been stranded on their house for several days without food or water. Um, they were able to get them some necessary supplies. Uh, more importantly, have a connection to the emergency service people there that day. Uh, and they were eventually airlifted out in, in good condition. And they're safe and sound today because of a drone. Great. And as a result of that, uh, fire departments all over the nation are starting to get and use this equipment. In fact, the, uh, the current predictions are that within the next three years, um, a drone will be a standard issue equipment in every fire truck, every squad car. Uh, this was a, a recent training mission over in Texas with the fire departments. And you can see there's a lot of drones there. They love yeah. them. Wow. Yeah. And, and you also um, have done some work with animals. People are not the only ones that are a little bit uh, standoffish when it comes to drones. Yeah, that was interesting. We got a call from the Carver County uh, Sheriff's Posse, and they said, will you help us train our horses? And I was like, what? I'm like, we're drone guys. We're not cowboys. And they said, well, you know, sometimes uh, at a large outdoor event, like a parade or a music festival, uh, our mounted police divisions are out there and the horses get spooked by drones if there's if there's a drone there So we go out to their ranch and we help them acclimate their horses So the horses aren't scared of drones anymore and we do the same thing for canine units You know, it's not just us that has to get used to drones It's all of our service animals that need to do it too. Mm -hmm. As technology changes You yep. have to educate people and animals and everybody about what to expect. Yep. So yeah, we're not just search and rescue. We, we, we do, we'll, we'll help you any way you need it. That's great. And uh, when we come back from our break, we're going to actually take a look at a drone that we have here and, and get a closer look and learn a little bit more about that. Yeah. Scott Zimmerman with Air Bears. We'll be right back. CTV 101 allows you to discover the resources available to get involved at CTV North Suburbs and start making your own TV productions. This class is just over an hour in length and is an introduction to all aspects of CTV, including the studio, editing suites, live truck shoots, and field equipment. Classes are free of charge, so sign up today at ctvnorthsuburbs.org.
Welcome back. We're here today with Scott Zimmerman from Air Bears, learning all about drones and how they can save lives and educate people, do all kinds of things. And uh, we have one here with us today by my other guest. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about this, Scott? Uh, yes, this is, uh, this is made by a Chinese company called DJI, and this is called the Inspire One. It is uh, arguably one of the most proven platforms uh, on the market right now. It has some unique capabilities uh, that let us uh, that give us the opportunity to save a lot of lives. Um, I, can, I can deliver a life jacket to somebody in need in seconds with this drone. Um, and it, it can carry up to six pounds. It can stay in the air for like 20 minutes. Um, it can fly close to 60 miles an hour. And it costs about $3,000. <laughs> wow. So this is a professional model. I didn't know if they could carry things and, and drop things off. Oh, some of our... Some of the bigger ones are used to uh, bring chainsaws up to uh, firemen on like uh, three-story buildings. Yeah, we, we can get them a chainsaw a lot faster than, uh, than the current method. So that's, that's a big benefit to the firemen. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another application we hadn't even considered. So there are all different types. This yes. isn't the only model that you use no, in Air no. Bears. You know, the, the, the media picked up on the word drone because they really don't know what else to call it. Mm -hmm. um, to those in the know, that we call this a, a, a quadcopter because it has four propellers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have, and they're called depending on how many propellers they have. So you have tricopters, quadcopters, you got hex and octos for six and eight. Uh, those, are the, those are the big ones. Uh, but this, this one here is, is good because it's easy to transport. Uh, it's relatively small, uh, but it can do a lot of good. So if you have someone who owns their own unit, mm -hmm. and it's nothing like this, but it, it's functioning and they know how to operate it, they can come, they can call up Air Bears and, and join as a member if they're 16 with their own years equipment. Old. Yeah, if they're 16 years old and they have something that flies and carries a camera, they qualify. That's really cool. Uh, speaking of cameras, how do you get the video? Is it real time? Um, if some, if they're up there taking a picture, say of, of the, the for the fireman's application, mm -hmm. how does that information get back to the person in command? Well, what we do, it, it, most of your your drones are going to have a high definition camera on them like this, and it's stabilized with a gimbal, so your picture is never shaky. That's great, and all of that information is fed wirelessly to a tablet on your controller. Now we can do that or we can also send it to a command station inside of a building where they can look at it a big jumbotron if they need to. Uh, all of that information is, is, is sent uh, wirelessly and they can, they can watch it in real time. Wow. Yeah, and, we, and we also record it. But a very uh, important aspect of, of Air Bear's organization is that any footage that we take, we don't keep it. It's owned by the authorities. They have, they have the right to the information because, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with searches and search and rescues, it can be rather grim. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that the wrong thing doesn't show up on YouTube. And we, we take those extra precautions to, for the sake of the, uh, you know, the feelings of the families involved. Right. And speaking of uh, precautions, the FAA has regulations that have changed the way you do things. They've changed it tremendously. Uh, actually, they've made it a little bit difficult for us to respond to emergencies because sometimes we have to ask the FAA for permission mm -hmm. and they get three months to think about it. Um, those rules are slowly changing once they are seeing that the risk that these machines pose is not as great as they once thought. Everyone was afraid that they're going to be crashing into airplanes and killing hundreds of people. That has never happened. Uh, there's been a few reports, but they've been unsubstantiated. They're just, they, that's not what happened. So, um, yeah, the FAA is finally coming around and saying, okay, these things aren't as dangerous as we thought they were, so we're going to let you do this now. And So we're, we're waiting for those rules to be relaxed a little bit. Okay. Yep. If someone wants to get in touch with you, how would they do that? You just go to airbears.org. It's real simple. Uh, the, the website is maintained and, and, and staffed 24 hours a day, you know, because we're a global organization. Every time I go to sleep, the rest of the world's waking up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, and w w uh, the funny thing is we have a, a guy in Greece who signed up, and he, we have a little brochure that you can download off our website. A little informational uh, pamphlet, and he brought that into his local like consulate's office, and they immediately said, "Thank God you're here. 
we need you right now. And they immediately signed him up, and he's been helping them manage the refugee crisis that's been going on over in Europe. Again, not search and rescue, uh, an application that we hadn't even considered, but that one guy is making a huge difference in his community. And I'm sure that as technology continues to change, that you're going to be finding more applications Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yep. Do you have um, any sort of personal story that you can share with us? You know, I'm very proud of uh, our member Garrett Brill down in Texas. As I mentioned before, he was, he's the first person in history to actively save the lives of people using a drone, and, uh, and he's on our team. And uh, he's doing tremendous work, uh, training a lot of agencies, uh, providing the necessary support that they need, um, and he's just—he's a—he's an awesome guy. He's our rock star, and I talk about him every time I can because uh, he, he's great. There's there's four people that are alive and well because of him. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. I bet you got a lot of rock stars working for you. Like great organization and so so interesting. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for being with us well, today, Scott. Thank you for Scott. having me. You yeah. know, the exposure of this uh, is going to play a pivotal role in our success. So I um, thank you for your interest. And uh, thank you for all that you've done and, and all the help that you've given to so many people. I also want to thank all the CTV staff and the volunteers for helping with today's show. Thanks again to our guest, Scott Zimmerman, Air Bears. Check it out online, or, uh, yeah, on your website. Yeah, airbears.org. There it is again. I'm Bybee <laughs> Begners, and you are watching What's Brewing.